We went to Afghanistan because of a horrific attack that happened 20 years ago. That cannot explain why we should remain there in 2021. That it's time to end America's longest war. It's time for American troops to come home. U.S. troops, as well as forces deployed by our NATO allies and operational partners, will be out of Afghanistan before we mark the 20th anniversary of that heinous attack on September 11th. August the 30th, 2021, was the deadline set by President Biden for the American military to withdraw from Afghanistan and end the 20-year occupation. Four days before the deadline, on August the 26th, 2021, a bomb attack outside Kabul airport killed 13 American soldiers and 170 Afghan citizens. To attack the Islamic State in Khorasan, or ISIS-K, the organization behind the suicide bombing, the US carried out its last drone strike in Afghanistan before its retreat from the country. Get in, get in. Zarmina's house stands just 20 meters from where the missile hit. The frightening experience still makes her anxious. The target of the strike was Zarmina's 43-year-old neighbor, Zamarai Ahmadi. The missile killed him and nine others, including seven children from his family. Farshad Haidan is Ahmadi's nephew. Today, he has come to the courtyard home where his uncle used to live. <laughs> تمام اینجا را خون گرفته بود خیلی یک بوی خون بود دی خونه کل جای و شیشا کلش تکه تکه شده و دو شیشا را خال نو انداختیم پس ده نفر از یو شهید شده و دیگه دیگه بیخی به با وضعیت ما اینجا خراب شد باز از پشت یک چند دقیق تیر شد جنازه را آوردن جنازه را آوردن تنها اینمی چهار نفر را ما دیدیم دیگایشون تکاو تکا شده بودن تکاو پرچه شده بودن وارا با ما نشان نداده تنو فیصل دم دقا شهیدان و وقت مغزه هم دقا سیدیز منگا کورتا را باد شوی با منگا پلاستیک پلاست که برو را واخیسته ان دست وقت هم دو با مو دو سر نده دی اویلی نه منگا دی دی شهیدان و وقت مغزه پا پلاستیک لخپل پلاست می ماتور کرد دی انسان مغزه آقا تا دی منگا نرس کرد the sar posta kai prot vikhta puri dikhti ho chal se khabar hai kam narina wo de kam mashum wo Brandon Bryant the whistleblower of the US drone program served in the US Air Force from 2006 
to 2011, where his main task was operating drones to carry out targeted killings. Typically, all those missions start with human intelligence, right? We are told by someone directly operating on the ground, this is what's going on, whether they are actual force uh, multiplier people, like on our own side, or locals who had decided to be informants for us. Right, and we track it, we see uh, who's in charge, who comes here, and because we're also doing the mobile cell phone tower, every time someone is in that compound and uses their cell phone, we pick it up. And it, also, and it, and it marks it in the database that this person's here, this is what we're doing, and so now, Anytime that person leaves, we can be flying it over an area and pick up that cell phone number and we can pinpoint their exact location. This bomb is a motor. The motor is a very good thing. 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 جنرال زمرای احمدی است مامویم. ای خانم ایکان بیریخ خانم سفیر آمریکا نمیفهم که شاید دینی باشه. وی هم شاید رئیسشان باشه. رئیسشان کالد آمریکاست. یکس دمو خود چی گرفته؟ خود دمو ماسه که خودش کار میکرد. من نظرم خیلی وقت میشه است. ازی شاید یک نوسان شوازی. The drone strike was later called a tragic mistake. Ahmadi, in fact, worked for Nutrition and Education International, an American NGO that supported Afghanistan's poor. We are all the enemy. God be our Mama, my junior, Zamara Ahmadi, is a jerk. That we did not have the right to do that. We are a jerk. That we are not a jerk. خاندانی تو چیزا کنی همیشه وای جمعه که خاطر ساعت کلگی تیر شد کلگی را پیش خود جمع میکد و خیلی محبت خاص با کلگی داشت که همه گی را جمع میکد می آورد اینجا اینه می فاملای ما را شایی بود که خیلی جالب هم بود به ما یک چند دقیقه خاندان کردیم بعد از او اینه ما ما می اگام چیز می و فریش خندی می کردیم و خیلی شایی جالب ما را می شود که خیلی خنده کردیم ما اول قدرت جان است ما خویاگ چی بودیم که هیچ کاری بود دست ما افغان هیچ کاری کرده نمیتونه است خیلی از کارش تبار کرد چون مردم دیگر خودمون کشته باشه و دیگر ما را مزادیم تا تخریب تا بام دیگر امریکاس خو کار از امریکا که دخو امریکا باید. The Pentagon has promised to pay compensation and relocate the relatives of the victims to the U.S. Nevertheless, this broken family's trauma is difficult to heal. During America's 20-year occupation, remote areas of Afghanistan were hit by more severe and more frequent U.S. drone strikes than Kabul. The mountainous terrain of the Tangi Valley in Wadak province 
some 100 kilometers southwest of Kabul, saw some of the most intense fighting of the Afghan war. Yeah, with a cell for Gerom Lara, she should okay. Oh, I see what it is. I must have was a message. I move up to be a pastor, George Wallo. But there was a home before by not. The side is Pisce by Oshwa, come a corner of the person. Saida Pisce and Avim, I have two more border, okay, Chakumako. Fifty-five-year-old Mohammed Nabi is a building contractor who lives in this valley. Today, he has been called to a nearby village to see whether a house that was hit by a drone strike several years ago can be repaired. <laughs> For Tangi Valley residents, drones have long been their worst nightmare. Practically every village has had houses destroyed by drone strikes. For Mohammed Nabi, the war's biggest tragedy is the death of his two sons and his five-year-old granddaughter, who were killed during a night raid by the US military three years ago. This is the cemetery where his two sons are buried. Mohammed Nabi often comes alone to mourn. Many of the dead in this cemetery are civilians who were killed during the war. داد کریم شهید کریم کابرده داد اتل غازی کهرمان آباسین کابرده از هر چای چه باد باد کرده بیا اتل اسکا اتل ورای واقعی داشت سکیخ بی واقعی ویشته ل آغل تای بیا خخ کردی دی تو لیوز آب کاتای تای واقعی زاوی نیم مالیم کل دای دو دای دای دو ادوی تو شاک پات وی وی چه داد بذار دوی نیتی سه کم جوره بی کم اما تا پکور کی استادی وی با وی نیو مارمایم خاله دی the youngest son of Mohammed Nabi became a Taliban soldier following an abusive interrogation by the former government's intelligence agency. During the night raid three years ago, he refused to be captured and took the lead in firing back. The US military and Afghan troops who were searching for him attacked with drones, helicopters and ground forces at the same time. چرا اغلب ما به چه طول کور بامبارده ای چهار اغلب ما گا داغ این کلکای به باندیم که دکوتی کوتای چه بامبار اغلب کرد دا اورسای و اورسای لیار خواتا درم مرمی دا چه جورا پاتی شویدا
The, when the missile comes off the rail, it hits the set speed of sound 1.5 seconds after, and then it loses kinetic energy as it falls towards the target. So the sound wave hits the target about four seconds before missile impact. The missile goes and the guy hears it and then runs forward and the missile strikes. Brandon was not involved in any of the drone strikes featured in this documentary. But the psychological pressure he experienced during his missions was shared by other drone pilots. They can never be 100% certain about the identities of the targets on their screens. All I could feel was disgust. I watched the missile impact two people. So there were three individuals on a ro dirt road and they were carrying something that looked like sticks like this over their shoulder and walking with them. So they tell me to place the crosshairs between the first two people. And because, I mean, they might as well just get two and the third person can tell everyone that his, their friends died. Afterwards, in the debrief, they're celebrating it. They, they're laughing, they're joking, they're high-fiving each other, telling me that we're winning the war on terror, all sorts of propaganda nonsense. یا یه ورنه اصاب خراب شد زیم تایم آروا خیجه دا کابل ایچی وینی بود یه رمای چی دریشی و اولی بایت پانچه همه تملک یا آلا کش میوار که دا کس پیس ریخ موترسکیل بایراخ بیولا دو دا دا خدا یو اقا و چی واره دی کوتای سنگی دی پلپ پسر دی ما پدر را رحم باچه بود خینی ما تصمیم دا بود او دا تین طول دی آده واتم کابل لارم اقا تمیوی ما ورا دا This is Prince Charles Cinema, one of the most famous theatres in London's West End. Today, May the 19th, 2022, crowds are lining up for the world premiere of Immoral Code, a documentary that addresses the ethical debate over artificial intelligence weapons. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say no. Mm, that's a hard one. After the screening, experts from the fields of artificial intelligence, law and media from all over the world took part in a discussion. Was that governments recognize that maybe they don't need to do the amassing, or at least not publicly, which is what the NSA and other intelligence agencies were doing post that era, but they've been going to the private sector, getting all this sensor data that the other panelists are talking about, getting the private sector to build the systems with their expertise, and then they don't, their hands are clean in many regards. Accordingly, how much we should be really focusing, yes, on regulation and the law and government, but also potentially on educating individuals, educating you know, citizens like those who were featured in the film. Basically, where people who had lost families, um, family members or property could, you know, apply to get like a paltry few dollars, basically. Um, and this was all covered up and no one has been held responsible. Nobody has been held responsible for this because these are unmanned systems. And now we want to take it even further where we're not going to be saying, oh, well, a person made a mistake. It's going to be, well, the machine made the mistake. Same question. Among the guests is Laura Nolan, a former website reliability engineer at Google Ireland. Tech companies are purely driven by profit. They will do whatever they think is most profitable for them, and they do not care about your AI principles or anything like that. 
I am a software engineer. Uh, I've been a software engineer for about 20 years. I'm also known as a campaigner against autonomous weapons systems, and this is you know, very connected to my work. Where I worked on infrastructure at Google, infrastructure and reliability. According to the Bureau of Investigative Journalism, drone strikes killed between 300 and 909 Afghan civilians in the five years between January 2015 to January 2020. Instead of re-examining its own drone strike policy, the US government has instead increased its investment in research and, through cooperation with tech giants, plans to more effectively use drones to obtain data and improve the strike capability of autonomous weapons. Project MAVEN is one of the most controversial of such cooperation projects. Project MAVEN is a um, US military project. Um, so the idea of MAVEN, basically the problem that the US military had was it had too much high resolution um, drone video footage. This is called wide area motion imagery. And so they couldn't hire enough human analysts to actually watch all this footage and pick out um, what they're interested in. The idea was to build machine learning software that could take in this uh, wide area motion imagery video and pick out, like I say, people and vehicles and potentially other objects of interest. There were, there were certainly no internal announcements or anything like that, that, that you know, that there was this uh, military project happening. The first time I heard the words uh, Project Maven, I asked what that was, and I was told that it was um, machine learning analysis of um, military drone footage. My initial reaction was that I didn't want to work on that or anything related to that, because I feel like it's a misguided approach to tackling um, the problems that the US military were having in the greater Middle East. Google's involvement with Project Maven was a secret until late 2017, when Google employees exposed the matter on the company's internal communication platform. More than 3,000 employees signed a petition asking Google to cancel the project's contract. Dozens of employees, Laura Nolan among them, resigned in protest. Maven was absolutely not an autonomous weapon, but Maven was, I guess, the foundations for building autonomous weapons or at the very least um, software recommendation systems for targeting. I don't think that a militarized response to terrorism is actually effective strategically. I think it does a huge amount of uh, collateral damage to civilians, so I can't support it. After two months of resistance from a large number of employees, Google in 2018 gave up research and development in the field of military AI, which could have generated more than $100 million a year in revenue. Beyond the Afghan theater, we only target Al Qaeda and its associated forces. And even then, the use of drones is heavily constrained. America does not take strikes to punish individuals. We act against terrorists who pose a continuing and imminent threat to the American people. And before any strike is taken, there must be near certainty that no civilians will be killed or injured. The highest standard we can set. Barack Obama hoped to use drones to fight America's enemies in, quote, a just war. The result was that more and more Afghan citizens lived in constant fear. On August the 3rd, 2014, Mohammed Nassim and his cousin were working in the fields when they were hit by an unexplained US military drone strike. The attack cost Nassim his left leg and he witnessed the death of his cousin. Nurse <laughs> 
Sai irisha sunt de se vaș. Da. Lai și poora ke. Ce vana le ho vine bia ha psar lai ce dale roșu pe de parte ke boora ne vi. Sunt de gazara o cholu ranam da sha un ke kuru kana. Sai și vana pasama forța. Sai da manu, mu gida le iua bajawa, cur ke mu ganam rauri uda mu vitreșel cu daica war vashwala, pa mu gida durun paira bande vashwai duva khana da gai gida spazora raglan. Nu ce gai spazora la data ma avem au durun pair pa mu bande de trap ca ola te manda voca. Nu ce da si ucalur pe inza ca da ma mu htlalu, ola gedelu, au dai cerval te da da gale ola gedela. Dai bida si ucal me trahta war kara va, khatam va pe doua ke shahid va dai uge. Haga dumra, uachtam dali de uachtu uetala. Cum a tara gala mama purta ca zena shui purta ca vale. Da pchaha mi cadu a. Nurme ujudu pin trei sau pin zavi apart. De girobli de rezare shui. Na. Nu are pac sa tinj nar sa bjugli nara sa raho de girobli in ce zare si pe doua ki nala bjugli. Da, la zahmina, din urmă, pe ujut, că mi-am zahmina, de ce nu mi-am dat zahmina? Da, la parcii, de când a turit. Da, bala mi-a venit la da, da, zahmina. Da, tu la zahmina. Da. Pinda mi-a dat, pinda mi-a venit la da, pucim zahmina. Malimi am stat da, cu o mașină în așa de. Da, drei țaliri mi-aș tim chegi. Exadia la timp de carm, mi-i salda scarni și ca aici mi-i bel oahlu iaculango. Mohamed Nassim, who has always worked as a village teacher, claims that he and his cousin have never had any contact with terrorist organizations. He still cannot understand why he and his cousin were targeted during the US drone strike. The US military has so far not given him a clear explanation. Pe mugi ca că un geta pacar wa ca na, că ni mugi da se jara mult șai nu ne ucuri. O pe mugi da brid wa ca la da pa e era bande wa ca la. Na sala ora sala, mugi am ne piedu, ci mugi cenge uistela. Mu gonat sau mu e vale uistelu, mu gam duga zaita mai sau mu e cala eu, hai pac eu, a sraca ia eu, putem a cedam eu, putem a te ucuri, mu putem a jaran cala eu, vale mu uistelu. Ce dai uai ce parasana eu ca pe media ui ca dai uai ce mu basar duste eu, dai cala basar duste, dai am halak vedi. Jang ha de watan urana uran nida cana. Mu ha dai watan tane uragali dai uragali, dai uici ce mu basar duste eu. Da, e cala bașar dus de cana, da, le begar de spa ce apiu aile de curând ar oba să am hală cu ăla. Să asta ce e de misal, ce aia a găbăr că ce ulegi de aus, ce e misal de găscar băi tapă la curiu de amrică e ascar, în tăcam de te-a chistă băi, țin, țin, năzăr, țin, 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 țin. We presented Mohamed Nassim's questions to Brandon, the former U.S. drone pilot. It was a long-distance conversation about painful memories. De mug da nazar wa mug wich inshallah intikam khadai nat mi khastal ke da majahidin te khastal ka na mug da nazar wa chmu sawal da ma zalam ke gi mug khana ya chamal ke tawar gali na de chakur tawar gali khpal kur ke khalak na pri di da der khapa u bazla ke da allah nam gila wa chmu wali da ski pe da ma ghana na wali dum ra zalmina ke pe da musalmanan chmu wan de dum ra zalmina ke wich khpal kur ke ma Honestly, I, I understand how this man feels. I don't, I'm not going to say that I don't deserve his hatred because I was a part of it, you know. Um, and I think that those people that are devastated by war and conflict on both sides need to come together in peace, purposefully. I don't know if my prayers are ever heard, but I will pray for these people. And I hope that they pray for me. I met this lady once who brother and husband were killed in a drone strike. And she asked me, why did they have to die? And I couldn't give her 
an answer and we just cried together. All I could just feel is this no longer hate towards these people that are supposedly my enemy, but now I have hate towards myself. Those things, those moments, they stick with you, right? It's like, it's like burned, like branded right into your memory. I know what I did was wrong. Everyone's telling me, thank me, thank you for your service, you know, but who did I really serve? I served greed and corporations, not the people of America. I served, you know, political aspirations, not higher consciousness, justice, ideals, those types of things. In order to bring normalcy back to his daily life, Mohammed Nassim needs to regularly visit the International Rehabilitation Center of the Red Cross in Kabul for prosthetic maintenance and rehabilitation. Dr. Shukrullah Zirak, a landmine victim himself, has worked for many years at the International Center of the Red Cross and has seen countless ordinary people who have lost limbs due to war. Uh, so if we note uh, that uh, indirect war victim also should be counted as a war victim, uh, almost um, uh, a high percentage of uh, our um, clients are war victims. The International Center of the Red Cross Rehabilitation Center was established in Kabul in 1988. In the past 33 years, six more rehabilitation centers have been opened in various parts of Afghanistan to provide care for people with physical disabilities. A large proportion of Afghan civilians became disabled during the war due to airstrikes and landmines. At the beginning, our main customer was war wounded ICRC mandate. Then, of course, there was many other disabled not directly related to war, but they were in need of assistance. We tried always to help everybody doesn't matter for us who they are and from belongs to who, which party, which government or anti-government. In all these seven centers, we have two main activities, which are uh, physical rehabilitation and social integration of disabled in society. Under umbrella of the social, um, physical rehabilitation, we make artificial limbs, uh, prosthesis, uh, braces, disorthosis for people. Every year, 18,000 devices we produce and we distribute through all these seven centers. 
which are 5,000 artificial limb and 13,000 approximately the vertoses or the braces. This war, I think, one of the very, very, very long war in the world. The very bad effect is that uh, why, why a child lose his limb because of war, that two parties fight among themselves and the other people suffer. This is the things that it, it hurt not only me, every single disabled. The civilian population is much higher than the military that they, they suffer and they lost. Many people, their limb, legs or hands, or anyhow, they lost their life. Long-range killings by drones are not unique to Afghanistan. Civilian casualties caused by drone strikes happen continuously in Iraq, Syria, Yemen, Somalia and other regions. This is the London headquarters of Air Wars, an independent investigative agency that tracks, monitors, verifies and assesses the global use of drones by the US military and the resulting civilian casualties. We essentially started monitoring the actions of the US-led coalition in the fight against ISIS. So we have researchers who are local to the conflicts that we monitor, and they're continuously scouring uh, social media, local media, open source information to find an allegation of civilian harm. Then our geolocation team review all of that material and try and provide as close as possible a coordinate for that event. The geolocation is a very key bit that happens at the end um, and kind of enables us to orient each civilian harm assessment to as precise a location as possible. In 2021, what we were looking at really was civilian casualties as they were occurring based on kind of changes in the global environment. So a massive downturn in US strikes. I mean, for us, it's problematic in the same way, unless civilians know or have acknowledgement about uh, the fatalities that were caused by military action, they can't even begin the process of either getting compensation or having any kind of uh, you know, restitution as a result of the action. Last week, states have finally agreed to sign on to something called uh, the Political Declaration on the Use of Explosive Weapons in Populated Areas. And I would say the social impact has been limited. Something like civilian casualties isn't often understood or used, and that's because governments themselves are not always transparent with the public about their own military actions. And that's something that we're really trying to focus on and raise awareness of. Militaries themselves have to be the ones who are responsible for their own actions, and they have to be able to report kind of uh, back on that and to uh, societies, especially uh, people in, in the states who are kind of paying the taxes that fund these wars, um, to say these are the number of people that we're killing. After 20 years of continuous war, Afghanistan is devastated and its people suffer from poverty, but life must go on. For Afghan civilians who have been left permanently disabled due to the war, recovery and rebirth is often a long and difficult process. Okay. Oh, 
بکشه آفره نیش کن بکش نمیشه این زود بوشه که دانه میگیره خون ساشه زود بوشه خود کرسته جاولا کرده از پیش ایتیاد کنه خون ببینیم کاولا کرده از ایتیاد کنه حال برد میاره ایش که دیگر کار در زیگر کلان میباشه آزاد میباشه باز انشالله زود بوشه ایم شو مکتب تر تمام زندگی تر نرمال پیش بر کالایت خودت بپوش خودت بکش خود کارایت انجام بتی آستاس مستقل شوینی متوجه به کسی نباشی فقط کوشش که پدر مادر نو اکتر مکتب روان کنه قلم و کتاب چیتم کوشش میکنی ما برد کمک شیم سیست؟ آفرین بچیم دست پاره افس کنی و در مکتب نابنایان هم پدر تبو که شاملت کنه اوکی؟ واده است؟ قول؟ قول بته؟ آفرین Over the past 10 plus years, Dr. Zirak has lost count of how many children he has treated who, like Rashid, have a physical handicap. In his experience, their psychological recovery is always more difficult than their physical recovery. When talking to people who have lost hope in life, Dr. Zirak often uses his own experience to inspire them. I lost my leg with mild explosion. Exactly 14. And now I'm able to walk. I'm a physiotherapist, professional. I'm a responsible of this department. I got married with my love. I have a beautiful house, a car, a professional. I did my university, I did my school. All after this, most of our staff here is they have experienced their own stories with disabilities. And it's very easy for them to speak with the patients, to give him examples. This corner of the Red Cross Rehabilitation Center is what Dr. Zirak is most proud of. Every Friday afternoon, he comes here to chat with old friends. Uh, uh, امروز پلان هیچ کدام تکنیک هاست که برای تیم چی کارا بکنیم؟ امروز پلان از دارم که برای شما یک پک کار کنم پک کار فردی را کار دارم کنم کار کنم دفای فردی دفای فردی را بیشتر پیدا بکنم دریبال خوب کار کنم که چیز برن باید کار کنن از زگزال برن چون به خاطر کشیدن یا چون کسایی که آماده در تیم سی دو تیم یک بخش مدادش کمتر بود نی تیدال بود Dr. Zirak leads the wheelchair basketball team representing Afghanistan in international competitions. These physically disabled players have built their motivation and courage to continue living through sports. The sport itself is inspiring uh, for all human beings, especially for disabled. Uh, disabled do not have uh, many choice uh, to do many sports, uh, especially in Afghanistan. Uh, so the wheelchair basketball, even though it's an expensive game, expensive uh, sport, but it's a good choice uh, for people with disabilities, uh, with the lower limb disabilities, to do uh, many sport activities. It helps for their mental and their uh, mental status, for their physical status, and for a social integration status. On the other side of the world, more and more whistleblowers like Brandon are speaking out about the true nature of the war and seeking redemption in the process. You know, you can't have courage without fear. And I don't have any fear of the consequences because the truth is greater ended up being labeled a whistleblower and I got the International Whistleblowing Award. I mean, they honored me. And in fact, I remember before getting up on stage to give the talk, I had written in my notebook that I was like, I can't take this. I'm just a, I'm just a soldier who did bad things. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't be who you thought that I was. But right, it was interesting, right before I got on stage, there was this young man who came up to me and he told me that he wrote a rap song about me and he wrapped it to me and I just felt so honored that someone could do that. 
I wanted to be a hero growing up. I wanted to do something good with my life and benefit people. And so I closed my book. I don't remember that speech, but I did, I did speak it from my heart, just like I always do. I had nothing but my own experiences and my own sorrow, and that's the only thing that I could share with people. The fact that people still honor me 10 years later, you know, it's very humbling. I love it. It's, it doesn't make me feel alone, and I felt alone for so long. After suffering 20 years of war, the withdrawal of US troops has put an end to Afghans' fears of drones. This is a critical point. But the wounds left by the war still need more time and effort to slowly heal.